Good afternoon and welcome. I'm just going to give some people a few minutes to get online. My name is Jen and I am here with Ask an Autism Mom and today we're going to be discussing picky eaters. Let's just give everyone a few seconds and I'm just going to say at the end of the video I'm actually going to be drawing for two different draws. The partnership draw with Culture City and also Lackey Kids is doing a live video draw anyone who watches this video is eligible again my name is Jen and I am Ask an Autism Mom and if you stay tuned to the end I will be the announcing the winners of two different draws the partnership with Culture City draw and our Ask an Autism Mom video draw that we will be doing weekly today I want to discuss an issue that many autism parents know all too well picky eaters if you're an autism parent, chances are you've dealt with eating issues with your child at some point. Today we're going to discuss um, the logistics, why, how, and some hints, tips, and different things regarding how to deal with this. First, know that if you have a child who's a picky eater, it's not uncommon. Kids with autism are five times more likely to have issues with foods than their neurotypical counterparts. The main issues actually fall into three categories. Hi Miranda, great to see you. The three main categories are going to be behavioral, medical, and environmental. If you have any concerns that it is medical, please seek medical attention from your primary care physician. The medical aspect, you actually have <coughs> a much more likelihood of having medical aspect eaters, like eating disorders are very common with autistic children. So again, if you have any concerns about it being medical, please seek your doctor's attention. There also falls into behavioral. Let's admit it. Autism is a lot of a behavioral issue. So in the behavioral stance, remember children with disabilities are more likely to develop an eating disorder. If you suspect an eating disorder, again, your doctor will be your best um, resource in this. Other people who work with, hi Janelle, welcome and I'm glad to see you. Your Nancy, hi, glad to see you as well. And remember, ladies, stay tuned to the end. I will be doing two different draws and announcing the winners. One for the partnership with Culture City and one for watching the live video. I will be doing a weekly giveaway for anyone who watches. Now, behavioral help with autism and eating, the doctor is your primary. But remember, some speech therapists are actually feeding therapists as well. So they may. We've had a speech that was trained in feeding and swallowing, so we use their advice for a number of years as well. Melinda, good morning, or good afternoon, welcome. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cough. Dinner time can be a huge, huge sensory issue. Remember, you're mixing smells, sounds, different textures, different colors. All the senses are going to be coming at you in one meal time. So we need to kind of break it down and work where we can and modify what we can. During dinner, you always want to keep in mind the five different senses. The sight. I know my kid. Everything has to look the same. Same plate, same presentation, all the time. It just makes it easier for her to handle. Touch. Now here's where we have a few different things. You have temperature. So make sure the food temperature is the way your child likes it. My little girl likes it a little on the cooler side. So I'll actually cut up and plate her food first, put it to the side, plate everyone else's, serve everyone, and then serve her last so it has a minute to kind of get to the temperature she prefers. You're also 
looking at the texture of the food. Some kids, I know with my Riley, she not mashed potatoes for years. Now she loves them, but for a long time, that texture gagged her. So keep in mind the texture of the food being something your child does not like. I see that my friend Jason has posted the three ways to enter our sensory product away. There is a link posted on the in the comment section of this video. If you check it out and enter, you will be entered to win our sensory product giveaway. Now, the texture is important. I keep track of offending textures, and I always, always, always try to at least one texture that I know is her preferred texture, which for Riley, it's crunchy. So I always try and have one crunchy thing on her plate that she gets to help with the other textures. I remember smell. Some foods smell strong. To me, I'm overwhelmed by some of the smells of certain things, like cabbage, asparagus. They smell so strongly for me. So imagine what my child is smelling. So I kind of keep track of that. If it's something that I think is offending to her, I place it on the other end of the table and then slowly let her get used to it before it's close to her. It's just a way that she can adjust. Because you need to let them adjust to that smell because we all know once they get used to something, they're more likely to try it. Now we taste. We have four main categories taste falls into. Sweet, sour, bitter, or salty. Most kids have a preference. Most people have a preference. I know myself, my daughter, we much prefer sweet. So I try and work with that. My child doesn't like a lot of vegetables, so I sneak them in. I will be giving you some ideas on how to sneak in vegetables in a minute. But I sneak vegetables in. But on her plate, if I'm serving one of her favorite dinners, which would be pork chops <coughs> with mashed potatoes and um, I add applesauce. Adding applesauce to a pork chop and mashed potato or pork chop and mac and cheese dinner gives her that vitamins from the applesauce without fighting over vegetables. Natasha, hi, welcome to the video. So if you work with the flavor profile your child likes, they're more likely to do it. Now we do include sour, bitter, and salty. We just try and make sure she has her preferred flavors and tastes as well. That way to give them a little bit more control over their meal, which a lot of our children seek control, would be allowing them to choose the condiments they prefer. When our old son, who is not autistic, was younger, he would not touch green beans. My husband had idea. He loved ranch, so my husband poured ranch. Monique, hi and welcome. Lynn, hi. Again, watch to the end of the video, folks. We'll be announcing the giveaway. Now, to allow them to choose and have some control by choosing their condiments. My husband poured ranch on my son's green beans for years to get him to eat it because that's what he preferred. Now in this, I kind of trick my child. As you heard, she does not like vegetables. She actually tried making our dogs the other day that vegetables were very bad for you and they would hurt you. She had an interesting um, point of view, but that's hers. So what I do, Sammy, welcome, hi. What I do is I take pureed vegetables. I, I use, Amanda, hi and welcome. I use pureed vegetables, baby food vegetables, because it's easy, convenient, and I can sneak it in without her seeing. For us, she likes mashed potatoes now with some cheese in it. So what I'll do is make mashed potatoes, and instead of using milk, I'll use thin cauliflower. Hi, Chelsea. If you use thin cauliflower, 
it gives it that thinner texture. Robin, hi. But it also gives them the vegetables. So our mashed potatoes are simple. Mashed potatoes, a little bit of butter, some dry cauliflower, and some cheese. I mix it up and she does know the difference. Crystal, hi. If you change it so that your child doesn't know by adding vegetables, you're still getting the nutritional value that you want and getting the vegetables in that you really want, but your child doesn't know. One super easy way to ha add vegetables and hide it, hi Lorianne, would be simply taking pureed vegetables and adding them to sauces, soups. Jason and I were discussing one day how, how adding a soup, you take a soup base and you have vegetables, pureed vegetables. His children don't know that his wife does it and they love it. Shelly, Miss Sequoia, welcome. <coughs> Sorry. If you add pureed vegetables to whatever you can, your child won't know. Another fun little recipe. I know a lot of kids with autism love nuggets. How many of you have a child who loves chicken nuggets? Well, hi ladies. For my nuggets, I simply take my chicken breast. I cut it in whatever shape or size I desire. I take my breadcrumbs. You can't hear a noise. Yes, ladies, I'm sorry. The video does seem to be skipping a little bit. I am working on it. One minute. Give me two seconds. I'm going to see. If that helps. Now, <coughs> for my chicken nuggets, I take my chicken, my breadcrumbs. Janine, hi and welcome. Hi everybody. I know the video is skipping. Hopefully, once we watch it on the replay after the live, it'll come out better. So with my chicken nuggets, instead of using an egg wash to coat my chicken, before I bread it, I simply take my chicken, put it in the cauliflower, thin cauliflower, and then I put it in the breadcrumbs and bake it. Baking it with the cauliflower gives you the vegetables again, but it's hidden vegetables. Um, Jason was saying to me earlier last week that his wife loves to make curried rice. They make a lot of curry. Guess what? Curry is something very, very simple that you can add vegetables to. Dusty, I see your grandson loves chicken nuggets and waffles. For you waffle lovers who um, love waffles, there's actually waffles in the market. I can't remember the name. I will try and find them and post later. But they're waffles made with protein powder, so they're actually protein enriched, which is great for our picky eaters to get them that protein. Curry is something simple to add your veggies to. Remember, I don't like to fight with my child. I tend to give in in a way, but I go ahead and back and puree. So she's no, so we're not fighting, so she's not refusing the food. But I still feel comfortable knowing she's getting the vegetables. Now the last sensory issue that we have to discuss would be the sound. You want to eliminate as many strange noises as possible. I used to, when she was little and couldn't handle certain sounds, I actually had a sign on my door saying, please do not ring the doorbell. And just... A kind reminder to people that we have a child who can't handle noises, so ringing the doorbell overwhelms her. You're welcome, not, but you're not welcome to ring the doorbell as we would usually have a major meltdown. During meals, you always want to remember the main, main tips. Stay calm, stay collected, and don't fight. How many of you have a child that if it turns to an argument or a disagreement, they will fight you tooth and nail. These kids love to argue. Crystal, risk of loud sounds, it's pretty common. And honestly, I think a lot of 
adults are also scared of loud sounds. So it's just one of those things that if it bothers you, don't be surprised that it's going to bother your child. Now, never make feeding an argument. Like I said, instead of arguing, I simply... Dusty, yes, I did mention putting... I put pureed cauliflower in my mashed potatoes. What you guys can do is if you missed the video, I will actually be saving this video to the page, and you can watch it from the beginning later on. Don't worry. Yours is defiant, Crystal. Exactly. If you start making dinner time a fight, they're always going to be looking for that fight. So again, the pureed vegetables in your ve in your dinner makes it easier because they don't know, but there's no fight. Now, one major thing for us is I let her have a fidget. Now, Lackey Kids actually makes a wonderful tool. I'm just going to move my camera here for a moment, folks, and show you this wonderful tool that I am currently using. I'm using a TV table right now for convenience. This is the fidget band that we make at Lackey Kids. And it goes on any chair leg, any desk leg, and of course, as you see, it goes on a TV table leg. My daughter likes to bounce. My son likes to flick his feet. Having that during dinner gives them that sensory input while they're eating so they are more likely to sit and pay attention to the meal. Sorry, I'm trying to get that glare behind me gone. I will definitely work on getting that gone next week. I will move that picture. So if you give them fidget tools to allow them that sense of control and that sense of comfort while they're eating, they're probably more likely to eat. Again, folks, in the comments, there is a message from Lackey Kids about how to enter our giveaway. So go ahead and at the end of this video, enter. Now, how many of you have heard the saying a billion times, they'll eat when they're hungry? I used to get told that a lot. Don't push food on her. She'll eat when she gets hungry. Guess what? My child does not eat when she's hungry. She doesn't know when she's hungry. She eats a little bit more, but with her, it's drinking. If I don't push drinks on her, she will forget. I know Jason and I were discussing his son. They literally have to remind him. For us, having a schedule that's pretty, it's loose, but it's not. Wiggle seats at the table are great. <coughs> Just that, that fidget that movement helps. Now, with Riley, she doesn't eat when she's hungry, so I did the schedule. A simple schedule that shows our day and says when we're going to eat, when we're going to drink, so that I make sure she's getting the proper food and as often as she needs, and especially for us, the drinking. Exactly. I know a lot of kids that would starve before they would actually eat. So, if you let them have control but have a loose schedule, it kind of works well for a lot of kids. Now, you want to give um, your child a sense of agency. Give them some control. Like, like I said earlier, using the condiments to flavor their food gives them the control over it they want. They get to choose how you flavor your food. My child used to do the same thing. She would rather drink. She actually lost so much weight because she was drinking only milk all the time and she was barely eating. We actually had to time drinks so that they would be spread out through the day and still allow for eating. And I actually made the rule for a while that you could not have a drink until you had so many bites. So she'd do so many bites of food and then she'd get her drink. So many bites, another drink. But if you allow them the, the sense of control, my child 
has to use the same plate always, same cup always. But we let her have her control in, I let her help me cook, especially newer foods. We love to bake. So I start with baking first because she's more, well, like I said, she likes sweets. She's more willing to try a sweet. Dusty, great seeing you. Come back and remember, I will be saving the video for people to watch later. So what we do is I let her have control and she bakes with me. She loves baking. So helping, getting her to help me actually makes her more willing to eat it. I also give choices. I will choose, say, like tonight, I chose my meat. I'm doing chicken. But I let her choose the side, which is going to be tater tots, and we're going to do a fruit with it, because for us, fruit is easier than fighting over a vegetable, which will never work anyway. So I give her that control. Now here's a little baking tip that I found, thanks to my, actually, thanks to my mother-in-law. We make chocolate cake a lot because my kids love cake and it's an easy snack that they can eat. We make a chocolate cake with, of all things, shredded zucchini. She has no idea there's shredded zucchini in there. It's a simple recipe that my mother -in found online. We shred our zucchini. I hide it from her. We make our cake. I have her run into a little errand for me while I mix the shredded zucchini in the chocolate cake put it in the pan, bake it up. She has no idea it's there. And then I don't even use icing. We just sprinkle a lot of a little tiny bit of icing sugar on top for a little extra sweetness. And my kids have no idea. Funny story, my mother-in-law actually tricked my non-vegetable loving husband into chocolate cake for a couple of months. He didn't realize that there was zucchini in there. And now he won't eat chocolate cake because he's afraid we're going to give him zucchini. But find what works for your family and use it. Whoopie pies. Ooh, Heather, that's a good idea. I'm going to have to test is putting zucchini in whoopie pies. Melinda, I'm sorry. It is freezing a little bit. I'm going to work on that this week and see what's going on. But remember, you can come back and watch the video later. I will be saving it to the page. Crystal, healthy sweets is something that I struggle with. But zucchini for me works well. Now I just want to touch base on one issue a little bit. I'm gluten free. My children are not. I have spoken to a few different dietitians, nutritionists, and they don't, when you have a child on a limited diet, like a lot of our children, when you take things away like gluten, like dairy, unless they really need it taken away for allergy issues, you're just losing more of the diet. Oh, ladies, I am loving these suggestions. Thank you. Keep suggesting zucchini bread, banana bread, pumpkin bread and muffins. Pumpkin cookies sound delicious. What a great way, and thank you ladies, for supporting each other and helping this. This is what I want to do. I want to add and have you ladies help me. I want to interact. I want to know what you're thinking. I want you guys to help me with tips and tricks that you have that I may not have thought of. Heather, your son will only eat potato and rice for size. He won't eat noodles. Hmm, let's think about that a little bit and maybe later I will look into some things and write in the comments some questions. And I just saw briefly a um, message about making zucchini into gummies. I'm going to have to get you to send me that recipe, please. That sounds delicious. The Two Bite Club. Thank you. That's what I was just about to discuss. We do the touch, kiss, taste, chew rule. First, we have to be able to touch it, and then when she's used to touching the new item, we move to kissing it. Once she can kiss it and is used to it like that for a bit, 
I make her take a bite. And then eventually we'll move to swallowing. One of our therapists a number of years ago when she was, I think Riley was about two and a half, she could not stand the texture of marshmallows. So her therapist one day came in with edible markers, different size marshmallows, and toothpicks. Riley made snowmen out of these differently sized marshmallows held together with toothpicks. And then she drew on him and drew a face and everything he needed. And then the therapist actually had her give the snowman a kiss. So again, look, touch, taste, and then swallow. Again, this marshmallow snowman was just something out of the box that worked for us to get her to actually taste, touch it, kiss it, and then taste it. Chrissy, I understand. Riley was little for and nonverbal till she was almost three. So I understand that it, it's more challenging when your child is not verbal. That's why you just you keep trying and you keep finding little tricks that work well. The problem with certain colored foods. I can't say we have a problem with certain colored foods, but I noticed she likes tan and orange foods the most. In our case, if it's tan or if it's orange, she's more likely to eat it. Very odd, but that's just her. Except when you get to her Fruit Loops, which she eats daily. Um, another thing, one of the I'm coming to the end soon, but one of the major things is accommodate your child. Riley is a very slow eater. She takes a very long time. So for her, it's not a big deal. But if you have a child who eats quickly and then just sits there at the table bored, that's going to eventually cause problems. If you can, let them move away from the table. Let them bring a book. Do what it takes to accommodate them at the table. They may not have it in them to actually sit and wait for mommy and daddy and big brother to finish their dinner. So... Again, accommodate where you, you can. <clears throat> Just find what works and use it. Now, I'm so excited about this next part. We are going to be doing a giveaway. First, I'm going to announce the winner of the partnership giveaway with Culture City. We have three winners in this. Cassie sign language wait, be sign language for about two years with our daughter and then eventually she just one day decided to start talking. Now the giveaway winners in the partnership with Culture City are Bobby Joe Finesse from Pennsylvania, Leah Neff from Washington, and Janelle Lynn from Pennsylvania. Ladies Go ahead and message the page and we will get back to you on winning your, or on claiming your prize. Haley, great. <coughs> you let your child watch a video. You found what works for your child because they're so quick. So again, just find what works. But I want to say this group of women with us today seems phenomenal. I love how we're all contributing, we're all giving our ideas, and working together. This is what the autism community needs to be about. We need to support each other. We need to build each other up. We need to help each other. Now, for the fun part, every week I will be doing a draw for someone in the video that watches live. So, today I'm going to do it a little bit different. Jason, I hope that's okay. I found that you ladies are very interactive today and I'm loving that. So I'm going to actually pick people that were extremely interactive in today's video and reward you with a fidget band like I showed you a few minutes ago. It's a wonderful tool that I happen to love. 
Let's go. Cassie Pierce, you want a fidget band. Chrissy Jason, that's okay if you share a Facebook account. You're the daddy, and I know that now, so welcome. So again, Cassie, you won a fidget band. Go ahead and message the page, and we will get that out to you. I'm just going to write your name down so I don't forget. And I'm also going to give one more. Sorry. Crystal Blackwell. You won a fidget band. Message the page and we will get one out to you. I'm going to show you real quick one of the amazing tools that Lackey Kids does giveaways for often and something that we happen to love. Cassie Pierce, yes you darling, you want a fidget band for your little one. I'm just trying to find Haley Suzanne Neal. I'm going to let you know that we will actually be writing down your suggestion right now. Jason, we have a suggestion for dealing with meltdowns. We will um, look into that and hopefully soon I can do a video. As I'm seeing now, a few of you are commenting that meltdowns are an issue. This is what I need, ladies and gentlemen. I need you to let me know how we can help you better. Letting me know that meltdowns are huge is big. I'm going to show you real quick the travel kit that Lackey Kids makes. This happens to be my, my daughter's favorite, favorite tool from Lackey Kids. It is a puppy neck pillow, but it's actually weighted. Again, weighted neck pillow, it's wonderful. And then we have the weighted lap pad that goes with it. There is one part of the travel kit. It is a marble maze for their fingers. But that is currently, um, we're waiting on that to come back on stock. So I don't have one today to show you. Again, um, the giveaway winners for the partnership with Culture City are Bobby Joe Finesse from Pennsylvania. Leah Neff from Washington and Janelle Lynn, Janelle Lynn, sorry, from Pennsylvania. So go ahead, ladies. If you won from the Culture City um, giveaway, message the page. And for Cassie Pierce and Crystal Blackwell, go ahead and message the page. Melinda, let me show you what we use real quick before I finish. I use a simple fidget band with kids. It's on a TV table right now because it's easy, but I let her sit at the table and she likes to do this. Find what works for your child. Now, <coughs> unfortunately for today, we are at our half an hour. I will go ahead later on and go through the comments and talk to some of you that have left comments, concerns. I want to interact with you later and gentlemen so let's talk after the video again the video will be saved so you will be able to watch it later and we'll be able to discuss Andrea yes my child um, does throw up during some meltdowns I am going to work on the meltdown issue and see what I can come up with and do a video hopefully in the next little bit um, that's off Let's talk in the comments and see if maybe not only I can help you, but if other people watching the video has tips and tricks for you. Again, have a great day. I will be back next week. I've loved talking to you, and I will be in the comments for anyone who needs me. My name is Jen again, and I am... Ask an Autism Mom, and I had a great day. Have a great day, ladies. Have fun tonight cooking, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.